in this lecture you in this course you have heard me mention activation functions a few times now we are going to briefly see what activation functions are and their role in neural networks and specifically i will introduce you to some of the most common activation functions that are usually used so the terms that we use in this course are not unfamiliar to you i'm not going to introduce any of the mathematics behind these activation functions because you really don't need the mathematics when you are using the different activation functions well not as per se because these activation functions and the associated neural networks are implemented through the r packages so it is a good idea to be acquainted with the terminology and know which activation function is suitable in which situations rather than dwelling on the mathematical notations so just to reiterate this is an ordinary artificial neural network and here is where you have an activation function so we multiply the input by the weight and add the bias and that is what is fed in here so an artificial neuron neuron it calculates the weight sums of its input like so and it adds the bias and then the activation function so you know all of this is done and then the activation function decides whether the artificial neuron and the this oblong is artificial neuron which has the activation function and which will decide whether the neuron should be fired or not the activation functions they check the y value produced by a neuron and decide whether the outside con connections should consider this neuron as fired or not and which influences the output so now i'm going to introduce you to the different types of activation functions which are most commonly used one of the most commonly used activation functions is a sigmoid activation function it's a non linear activation functions and by far because the problems that we typically use with artificial neural networks and deep learning are have a non linear nature so mostly the activation functions are non linear and this allows for layer stacking the activation remains within the bounds of 0 to 1 so basically very large or unnatural val values won't result in that neuron being fired now sigmoid function based activation functions it is especially used for models where we have to predict the probability as an output and since the probability exists between 0 to 1 it is a suitable idea to to use sigmoid function as an activation function the only problem is that this can get your neural network to get stuck now there's one more term that i'm going to introduce you to right now and this is something you will encounter a lot when we work with convolutional neural networks and that is a softmax function it is a more generalized logistic activation function and it is used for multi class classification a very commonly used activation function is the tan hyperbolic activation function and as you can see the formula it is a scaled sigmoid activation function and it is non linear its values can range from minus 1 to 1 and the advantage is that the negative inputs will be mapped strongly negative and zero inputs will be mapped near zero and the upshot is that this kind of an activation function is useful when we want to carry out classification between two classes so if we want to work with binary classification problems then we can consider tan hyperbolic then i come to something known as rectified linear units or relu and you are going to see a lot of relu it is one of the most popular activation functions at the minute and it gives the output x if the x is positive otherwise it will be zero it is non linear it doesn't look to be non linear it looks like a linear system but anyway it is actually non linear and it varies from 0 to infinity and it is if you just look here closely it is actually half rectified and this means that any negative input given to the relu activation function turns the value into 
zero immediately in the graph like so so any negative value will become a zero but its limitation is that it should only be used within the hidden layers of a neural network model and we and for output layers and this is something that you're going to encounter when we work with convolutional neural networks and when we work with output layers then it's a good idea to use relu within the hidden layers and softmax function for classification problem and in the output layer of this particular output layer we can use a softmax function for classification so these are among the most common activation functions that are used and relu is absolutely indispensable relu and softmax when we work with convolutional neural networks